We'll start it off with, uh, my name is Rick Jones. I'm the Butler County Sheriff, Butler County, Ohio. Uh, I just came back from the National Sheriff's Training in uh, D.C. Uh, three days ago, two days ago. We were briefed by the FBI director, Ray, the director of the FBI, and several federal agencies. There's 3,300 sheriffs in the United States. The President of the United States refuses to meet with the sheriffs of the 3,300. We have a hierarchy, we have a president, we have a vice president. The President of the United States refuses to meet with the sheriffs. He also refuses to meet with the police chiefs of the United States. They have a hierarchy also. He refuses to meet with them to talk about border issues or talk about crime that's going on because of the border issue. We were also told by Mr. Ray, the FBI director, that there are more red flags going off now than before 9-11, okay? When I say red flags, meaning people that are here in this country that are wanting to do harm to us. We were also explained we're, in the, we're bombing two countries right now. Two countries. These people do not like us before this started. There's thousands of people here from other countries, 160 different countries. They're here not to be our friends. Some of them are coming because they're wanting to come here to the best country in the world, the way we see it. Some are coming here to do harm to us. And we were told by the FBI director, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. We were also told five sheriffs went to Israel five weeks after the attack. The only thing that saved the Israelis, the government, was the local police. They were outgunned, outmanned. They came over. The Palestinians did. They came over. They killed, raped. The sheriffs were there. They talked to the police. The local police or what saved that country. You can't just call, even in Israel, you can't just call the military up and they're going to be there, okay? They went house to house, raping, killing. The Israeli police, when our guys got there, the sheriffs, said they just don't hate us. They hate you guys equally. And the same people that train them are the same people that train people to hate us. The FBI director said when 9-11 hit, there's more red flags now than then. So, and he said, these are people that want to kill us and do harm to us. Now, so you're wondering, I want everybody to know what I know. I can't tell you everything, but I want the public to know that we are in a terrible way right now. The United States, and I'm going to get to the local, the United States, we're on the defense. You can't be just defense and not have an offense. We have no offense. We're just defense. We're absorbing these attacks. We're in other countries. We're supplying them with weapons. We're supplying them with our, our, our treasure, our money, and we're not doing much back home. So, with that in mind, we were also told that they're going, this is from the federal government three days ago, they're going to attack our elections, which they've always done that, just not the national. They're going to go into the locals. They encouraged us to talk to our local election officials and be prepared as much as they can for cyber attacks. Even local, you have to be prepared. We've been told that, again, they're coming here to do harm to us. And even in Ohio or in the United States, we're not going to be able to call and ask for help from the federal government. They're going to be busy. The military's not coming, the National Guard, when 9-11 hit, it was all the police and the fire. And they were in total, total organized chaos. The military had the scholars. And I don't want, somebody asked me, am I like Doomsday Jones? And I said, no, it, 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 I'm not like Chicken Little. I want you to know what I know. And if you don't believe what I'm telling you, that's okay. You can do what the Israeli citizens done. You can build a little safe house in your basement. And good luck. Uh, now, 
get to where we've been attacked here in Butler County, you're going to think, well, we've never been attacked. We have. The Russians attacked our system, our electronic system, our computer system. They hacked it. They also are trying to hack, just not ours. And they, we were down for two months, just a paper. Hacked our dispatching, hacked everything. Now, was that to help us? No, it wasn't to help us. It was to hurt us and cause chaos. As we speak today, the Russians are still attacking our computer system, just like they're attacking most of yours. But I want the public to know this. The Chinese tried to attack our cyber system here in Butler County, which includes everything that we have, dispatching for police and fire, five times a day. I want to repeat that. Five times a day. The Iranians are attacking our computer system and trying to hack it three times a day. I want to repeat that. Three times a day. Now, are they doing that to help us and be our friends? No, they're not. They're trying to disrupt everything that we do. And this next election coming up, they're trying to do the same. So what we're doing here is we've got rifles in every police vehicle we have. We have what we call a go bag. We have extra magazines. And we're going to start training civilians. We've offered uh, classes to train civilians. And we're going to start training civilians on what to do when disasters hit and emergencies hit. Naturally, we can't train the whole country. We can't train the whole county. We put this up online yesterday. It's full. We can do like 30 people at a time. We're trying to get it. And the organization that is doing that is um, uh, Texas a and They're coming here. The federal government's paying for it. They're going to train 30 civilians on what to do when disasters hit. 30 out of 400,000 people is not much. So we're trying to get more classes. Don't want to cause fear. Don't want to cause panic. But I want the public to be aware that you are under attack. And when they're attacking, they're trying to get our cyber system. We have a grid system. Butler County does. The whole United States. Hell, our grid system goes out when it gets hot. So, and our grid system is from the 1960s. And they're trying to attack our phone system. The Chinese are flying over with their little balloons. That's not to help us and help us do some weather direction. And all we're doing is we're on the defense. We're absorbing this. And these other countries that are attacking us overseas, it's a lot of drone attacks. Getting to drones. You have the technology that local law enforcement has on drones? Zero. We can fly drones and... Most police departments and sheriff's offices have drones. We can't detect drones. Uh, hell, they look like a bird in the sky. We can't make the drones stop. We can't stop them. When you see football games on TV, the national football games, they call timeout to stop the drones. Hell, my grandkids have drones. Everybody has drones. We have no technology. The federal government doesn't share any of the drone technology with us. So what we're going to do is we're reaching out to the private industry, and we're going to see if we can get anything that can detect drones and how we can stop drones. Now, again, it's not to scare people. This is the truth. Everybody in this room, the news media, you guys get hacked. You try to get, they try to hack you. One of the local channels in Cincinnati was hacked. They were down to paper for several, several weeks. Just paper. When we were hacked, we were down to paper. Our computer system, our dispatcher, all happened. Again, that's being attacked by foreign countries. You wouldn't think that a foreign country would be attacking us. The public needs to know we're being attacked every day. Now, people that are here to do us harm, do we expect? I've been to the border three times. People are not just turning themselves in. They're actually called gotaways. And some of them are getting through with backpacks and packs. Now, are they bringing groceries with them? We don't think so. We believe the ones that don't want to get caught, there's a reason for that. We believe they're a good, strong possibility they're bringing something here to cause us harm. You have to believe that. China has safe houses in every state in the United States. Now, after I discuss that, I'm going to take questions. But there's three things I'm going to be asking the state of Ohio to do. On the offense, not just the defense. I've reached out to State Representative 
Sarah Crothers, and I've reached out to State Representative uh, Cindy Abrams, two state representatives, and I've asked them, I've instructed them, and you're going to receive a copy of it, that there's three things I'm asking the state to introduce legislation on. One is the northern border. You think that we don't have a border, but we do. We border Canada. So what happens is the um, uh, border security have been pulled, uh, a lot of them, a large portion of them, quite a few of them, to go to the southern border. So what happens when we do that? Drugs are coming back across more the northern border. People are coming across. Water and land. With that in mind, I want you to keep in mind, I'm asking that the, there be legislation introduced and that the governor appoint a task force to do interdiction on people and drugs coming in across our waterways and our borders into the state of Ohio. Texas has done some of the similar. So the fentanyl has decreased by 40% from Texas and moved over to Arizona. So it's coming across. I was told five and eight pills that are coming across into this country have fentanyl, in, the illegal pills. China helps the Mexican government with the fentanyl that comes into our country. Again, they're trying to help us out. Uh, they're our friends. 5,000 people die a year in Ohio, fentanyl poison. 100,000 die a year in the United States. Our government is doing nothing to stop it. We're on the defense. Number one, that we have a border security task force. Number two, I'm asking that the two state representatives introduce legislation that will also uh, form a full-time, 24-hour-a-day uh, cyber security, not part-time. Every department has their own. We don't communicate with anybody. If we're going to be attacked, which we're getting every day, I assume everybody is. I'm asking that these two state reps introduce legislation, that we have one cyber security czar that's full-time, non-stop, 24 hours a day. They're attacking us all. Third, very important. I'm asking that legislation be introduced like in Texas, that if you're pulled over or stopped in the state of Ohio, that there be legislation, the law changed, that you can be charged with a state felony charge of being here illegally, and you can be arrested and charged. Those three things. Now, I come to you not to alarm you, but to arm you. I want you to know what's going on. None of this I've made up. This is being told to us. And the reason it's being told to us, because 9-11, they knew it was coming. And none of us knew. No communications with local law enforcement. We can't do anything with drones. We have drones, but we're going to. And we're going to do everything we can to protect our community, to keep our life squads, our fire, our dispatching. If you've ever lost your phone or your battery goes dead, everybody freaks out. Imagine if you can't use your cell phone. Now, uh, again, they're getting into our cyber and that's what our country, that, you can't pump gas without electricity. You can't pump water without electricity. So they're doing this to us. These are the three things that I'm going to ask these state representatives. I've been in communication with them. You can reach out to them. They'll be waiting for the conversation. And this is just the beginning. And again, I've instructed my IT people to start looking at ways that we can detect drones and what we can do to stop drones. I don't know if there is any technology. Our government doesn't even have enough. Now, I will take questions at this point. Any questions you got? Yes, sir. Good morning, Sheriff Jones. Yes, sir. It's an honor to be in your presence today. Um, if given the opportunity to talk to the president uh, through your organization, the Sheriff's Association, what are some of the things you would like to talk to him about? The question was, what would I talk to the president about if I had an opportunity to meet with him? I would ask him, to please close our borders, help us out. It's not, just, they're not staying in these border states where they're coming across. They're coming in, every state is a border state. Please help us stop the Chinese from bringing this fentanyl through our border and stop all these cyber attacks. They're attacking us all and all, we have nothing. We don't have any technology to stop it. We're on the defense. The FBI director said for every one person we have in our government, I want to repeat that, every one person we have in our government, 
that deals in cyber, the Chinese have 50. 50 to 1. And I don't know what we're doing. I assume we're just on the defense. Please help us. It starts with the border. We've got to have our border secure. And us in the interior of the United States, we need help. We've had people that are dying every day. Everybody in this room, everybody that's listening, has a friend or a family member that's died of fentanyl. Next question. What was the response like from uh, Representative Abrams and Crothers when you talked to them? Uh, they were excited to do everything they can to introduce this legislation and maybe more. And I told them it was of the utmost importance. We need to get on the offense. And if our government's not going to stop it, we got to do it here in our country. We got in our county. I'm going to ask the Butler County Commissioners. Uh, every department in our county and in Hamilton County. Everybody has somebody that does cybersecurity. It's not 24 hours a day. They do it 24 hours a day. They have an incentive. They do it 24 hours a day, and they have hundreds of thousands of people attacking us every day. So I'm going to ask the Butler County Commissioners if they can get some kind of a task force or appoint one person that's in charge of this, and we all can get together and share information, how we can stop this. All we're doing is defense. We can't do offense from this level, but we can sure do defense. And it's just, if you throw the dart at the board enough, you'll hit a bullseye. And everybody here, everybody's being uh, attacked cyberly, and it's not to help you. It's to cause you grief. It's to cause you not to be able to dispatch. And then they want money from you. They want a ransom. We didn't give them a ransom, so they released all of our information. And uh, the FBI, you know what they told us? We don't recommend ransom. But some people do. So, next question. You mentioned that you're going to have some conversations with the Butler County Commissioners, but have you already shared with them what you learned in D.C.? I've shared with one of them what I've learned, and I'm going to meet with a group of them, and I'm going to tell them what I've learned, but they already see that by what you're doing here today, and the public's going to see it. We're going to put it out. We want everybody to know what we're doing, and everybody, we all need to be on the same page. We can't just have... Uh, I think the state of Ohio has a part-time person, a part-time group, and they meet on occasion. You know how much it shared information we get from that? Zero. We should all be on the same information. I'm going to ask the commissioners to form a committee immediately and appoint or hire somebody. That's all they do is security, cyber security. Somebody that can do it, not somebody that's working in the parking garage and parking cars, and they get appointed to that job. We want real people. We're meeting with experts in the field as we speak, and we're trying to share resources and gain more information. I'm not going to tell you who they are, but I want everybody to know in our country that I'm doing everything that I can. I'm one sheriff of 3,300 sheriffs, but I have a very large mouth, and I want everybody to know what I know. I want you to know what the FBI told us just two, three days ago. It's pretty fresh information. And if you don't think that we're under attack, we are. And it's, we train for mass shootings in schools, we train for mass shootings in the malls, but we don't train for multiple shootings or multiple attacks. And the National Guard's not coming to your community to help you unless it's a flood or disaster, and you're on your own for about seven days. And if you remember 9-11, which a lot of you don't, they were on their own. And the police is your last line of defense police and fire. We're training right now for hazmat. We're the police and we've been training for hazmat. We have hazmat equipment. We belong to the Hamilton County hazmat team and we're training for chemicals uh, because we have people that are driving trucks in this community and all over the United States that don't even speak English. They can get driver's license. They can take the test. Uh, I, I don't know if they're here legally or not. So I give you that information. It's a lot to to fathom what's going on, but I, I am asking that you put this information out to the public. The class that we had were full, it filled up last night, and we could probably do 5,000 people in that training. People want to know what they do when things, when your cell phone doesn't work. If you've lost your cell phone in your house, you're almost cute because you can't find your cell phone. Imagine not being able to use your cell phone, and imagine not being able to do dispatch. Uh, no electricity in the wind. I mean, not to scare people. It's not to 
alarm you, it's to arm you. Sure, there's the play, the, the analogy of see something, say something to all Americans, especially in the Ohio region, Hamilton County, Monroe County and the like. See something, say something. Is there a number individuals can call? If they see something, yes. it's very unusual. There is, and we're going to give that to you before we leave. There's a number to call. And we uh, had an incident uh, uh, a week ago, and we depend on the public. We put information out all the time. We communicate with the media. You help us get that information out when we're looking for people. When people are murdered and there's mass shootings and we're looking for suspects, we have to determine, can we put that out? Should we put it out? We need to put it out, and we depend on you to put that out. And if you do see something, pay attention to where you're going. Pay attention to what you're doing. Pay attention to who lives next door to you. And people are here to do us harm. And that's not a scare tactic. They are. They come across the border. And they're not coming across and all turning themselves in. These are people that are coming across to cause us havoc. You can't just be poor and walk across the border because you come from a poor country. The drug cartel controls that. They will kill you. Uh, you have to pay either be an indentured servant or your family. They will kill you. And the Mexican government is not our friends. They're not here to help us. They're not in charge anyway. It's the drug cartel. Next question. What are some of the basic fear necessities people need to do to be prepared? Uh, if they can't go to your class, what here, works? I, I'm going to tell you some basic things you need to do to prepare. <clears throat> Just like when the power goes out or there's a tornado, they always tell you to keep enough food and water in supply, and this isn't doom and gloom, this is common sense. Uh, you might want to look at, as far as your phones, if they're working, if you don't have electricity, they have batteries, but they're only good for so long. You might look at solar charging devices. You might look at some foods that you can get that you can just mix up, like when you go camping or survival. We're not to that point, but we need to be prepared, and you need to look at it. And you need to, uh, most people would freak out without their cell phones. And if you can't dispatch the police, um, our towers are down, they're hacking our communication system. I mean, I'm not making that up. And they're trying to hack yours. They don't, they want us to be in chaos. They're trying to hack our elections, local elections. If local elections have issues, they always talk about the national, but they want you to feel it in the heartland. Really scare the hell out. Next question. You mentioned some of the training that your deputies are doing. Is there other additional training that you're looking to implement because of what you've learned? Yes, the, some of the training is the drone technology. We're trying to get that on our own because the government won't give it to us. So we're trying to get the technology there. We're looking at maybe squad training. We train when you, for school shootings, what to do when we get there, or mall shootings. We're gonna look at things a little differently. When we get there, maybe squad training. We're gonna ask uh, the government that they can share with us, but they're kind of busy. Uh, they they hire the wrong people. They're not. They're not. They're, they're just on defense. They've hired like thirty five thousand IRS agents. Well, good for them. Uh, I guess they need more tax money. We need infrastructure help in our country. There's going to be an additional hundred million people in twenty five years in the United States. Almost a third of our population. We're not building bridges, highways. The the infrastructure, we're not doing anything on our grids, nothing. So, uh, we're doing lots of training, and some of this is not my responsibility. I'm not in charge of the U.S. government, I'm not in charge of the state of Ohio. But these state representatives, uh, we do a lot of uh, things in our government, and we fight over silly things. Uh, we done an in, in, they try to do an impeachment on this, Mary Orcas, or however the hell you pronounce his name. And there's a lot of important things to do, uh, and nothing happens if they do that anyway. All we do is fight over silly things. We need to get together and get some things done to protect our country, most importantly, for our safety. In Maslow's hierarchy of needs, if you went to school and you remember that, water, air, food, safety, right up at the top, in the top pyramid. And we are not abiding by those safety things. We are in defense, not one piece of offense. Our military is on defense. We're absorbing drone attacks, and before we attack back, we call them and tell them, hey, we're going to be there in about a week. You might want to empty your warehouse out. We need help.
help here locally. You do, we do. That concludes the press conference at this time. We'll take any questions or anything anybody needs after it's over. Thank you very much.